Support for this podcast comes from Company Cam. Company Cam is a mobile app created for contractors by contractors. Users can take unlimited photos, which are location and time stamped, sent to the cloud, and stored securely. Every photo is organized by project and instantly available to your team, allowing you to see what's going on anytime, anywhere. SGI members enjoy an exclusive rebate with Company Cam, plus a free 14-day pro trial risk-free. Want to walk through it with us? To sign up for a quick 10 to 15 minute virtual demo, email us at partnerships at companycam.com. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Hello there, SGI family and other contractor friends. I'm so thankful you're here. As a reminder, all episodes of the Successful Contractor Show are available on YouTube, as well as your podcast player of choice. Also, if you're a non-member interested in learning more about SGI and how we can help your business grow, both from the top and bottom line, while becoming a part of the contracting industry's largest network of successful contractors, we're having Profit Day seminars in Houston, Boise, San Antonio, Winston-Salem, Colorado Springs, and Dallas. Give us a call at 866-299-8505 to attend. SGI members in those markets, if you'd like to come and share with everyone your experiences with the group, give your coach a call. We greatly appreciate your help. Today's show is a great discussion I had with Rocky and Trina Lozano of Air One Air Conditioning, Heating and Plumbing in Colton, California. This is a fun, energetic couple I'm excited to introduce you to today. You know, for years, Rocky and Trina lived a life of many contractors. They worked long hours, never got away never made any real money, sometimes living paycheck to paycheck, despite all their hard work. But over the last three years, Rocky and Trina have transformed Air One completely. They've implemented processes and procedures, prioritized culture, and begun training consistently. As a result, the company has enjoyed unprecedented success. Last year, they did $1.8 million in sales at 15% net profit, hands down their best year. But best of all, Rocky and Trina have been able to go on vacations, enjoy their life. Uh, Recently, they ran the business from a beach in Cancun because they trust their team and they put in all this hard work. I think you're going to enjoy this interview, and they really had a lot of great information to share, especially for a small company. Uh, They share how they've tripled their flipped leads, and those leads have enjoyed a almost 70% company-wide closing percentage. Uh, Also, they share information on a marketing tool exclusive to SGI members that generated $380,000 in sales during their off-season, and it only cost them $20,000 to do. Uh, They also talk about a new tool that's helped them hire smarter, that's also improved their culture. So, hey, without further ado, here's Rocky and Trina Lozano of Air One Air Conditioning, Heating and Plumbing in Colton, California. I hope you enjoy it and take away another two. Rocky and Trina, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm so excited to have you. Uh, for those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you both, could you please share with everyone uh, your name, your company name, and where you guys are located? Trina. Uh, my name is Trina Lozano, and our company is Air One Heating and Air Conditioning, and we are located in uh, Colton, California, so Southern California. Very nice. And who's this handsome gentleman next to you? Hi, my name is Rocky. Uh, all my friends call me Rocky. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you see my tag, it says Richard, but most of the time it says Rocky. I'm Rocky Lozano uh, with Air One Heating and Air Conditioning. We've been in business since 2007. Um, and uh, yeah, that's us. Very good. Now, how long have you guys been married? 20, 21 years. 21 years, yeah. Together for 28. Okay. Yes. Very good. Sorry to put you on the on, on the bubble there, Rocky. You had to make things. Someone asked me, I'd start to have to, you know. Yeah, I looked over off. at Trina. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been together 28 wonderful years, and we're uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. So she's my sidekick here, yep. taking care of everything on the books inside, and I also take care of just the, the, the technical stuff. So she's yeah. a great partner. I love that. I love that. We'll, we'll get into your story in just a minute. We're talking, though, for an obvious reason. Uh, you've been with SGI for a handful of years now, and, and things have really been moving in the right direction in terms of numbers. Just, do you mind sharing with everyone whatever you're comfortable with in terms of re- how revenue growth and any kind of profitability? Sure, no problem. Sure. Yeah, we, so we uh, last year were about 1.2. This year we're projected at 1.8, and we have about 15% net profit right now. 
Very good. Now you guys do two trades, HVAC and plumbing, right? Now, how much of is that is is HVAC compared to to plumbing? HVAC is the bulk of it, is it not? Yes, Correct. HVAC very light plumbing. We mostly do water heaters. Um, sometimes for existing customers, we'll do toilets and sinks, but mostly the majority of it, the bulk of it, is HVAC. I would probably say ninety-five percent of it yeah. is actually HVAC. Okay. So it is just exclusive just to our existing uh, uh, Comfort Club members. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Now, now, obviously, you guys can't do that that all on your own. You got a good team behind you. For people that always want to know what what you know, kind of roughly an org chart looks like for a company, you know, your size and, and your success. Let's let's talk uh, in the office first. So, who is in the office full time? Um, my son Andrew Lozano. So he is a CSR, but he also helps with some inside sales as well. Okay. So him, and then I have. Um, Jalissa, but she's part-time as a CSR, but I'm actually going to be transitioning her into helping me with bookkeeping. She's doing that at this time as well. Very good. So that's who's in the office. And then, you know, Rocky as well, who does yes. a lot of the marketing, sales, and I take more of the administrative payroll bookkeeping. Excellent. Excellent. Now, how about the uh, the team in the field? Uh, how, who handles sales for you guys? Do you have uh, comfort, what we call comfort advisors or salespeople, or do you do selling sure. techs, or what, what do you guys do? So we have a we have a combination of both. Um, one of them is our comfort consultant. We kind of okay. call it that phrase, so it sounds a little bit better for us. Sure. Uh, so we have one, he's on board. Uh, this is our second uh, comfort consultant, and uh, in in the since we've been open, that's okay. official apart from our sons and myself, right? So sure. he's actually out there in the field. Uh, he's doing well. He's been with us probably about four months now, mm -hmm. about oh, wow. four months, and uh, so we just opened up that position. And then we have Sally. What's his name? Oh, Jason, Mr. Jason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jason Mariano. I'm actually taking him to Expo so he can see the Crown Champions. Uh, oh, cool. In the spring, yeah. it's gonna be great. Um, we have a few installers slash uh, uh, transitioning to learn some of the technical skills as well as far as the service work. And sure. then we have a few servicemen as well okay. as far as techs. Now, they are selling techs. Yeah. Um, they, they are selling techs, but what we found is our success comes from our turnover needs, okay. which, is, yeah. which is very high. So what we do is we just have in-house training as far as teaching them how to turn it over to the comfort consultant and our closure rate is great. Uh, besides that, we have a sheet metal shop also in the back where we make our own custom sheet metal boxes, all the other good stuff. So everything comes out custom. But great. yeah, it's, it's so far it's been great. I think we have a total of um, up to 12 to 13 employees, I think right, 12 now. right now, 12 right now. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's working out really well. That's great. You said closing rate. I got to ask before I forget to ask later on, what are you guys closing at as a company? 67% right now in sales. Oh, that's good. That's really yeah. good for company wide. That's fantastic. You, you guys yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's for, for sales. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. That's excellent. Well, yeah, you guys must be doing some training. So we'll, we'll definitely, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I, for those that, that watch or listen, know I love learning people's stories. I think a lot, so much can be learned from that. So how do we get into this uh, this crazy industry? I'm assuming, Rocky, maybe you were the, the first one in, I'm not, not Trina as much? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Actually, she was uh, she was the manager at PetSmart. Okay. And, and I dragged her into the business. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was great. You know, uh, you know I, I was looking at my boss, you know, as far as all techniques, technicians think about, is that he's making all the money. Yeah. Right, yeah. so I'm gonna do this all by. I'm it's gonna come to the world, right? I'm not gonna work for the man. I'm gonna be the man. I'm gonna work for him. So right. we decided to open it up in 2003. Actually, right. that's when we established the business. But then we realized that we had no idea what we're doing. So I went back to work okay. until 2007. 2007 is when I decided to hang it up, and I went on my own. Okay. And I went on my own for a couple of years. I think about two to three years. Uh, and then Trina joined me. Was it two or three yeah. years afterwards? Mm -hmm. I needed some help. I was juggling the phone, fixing ACs oh, yeah. in the attic, and you know, uh, yeah. But we we got into the field uh, from a good friend of mine. You know, he was telling me, "Hey, man, this is great for you." And I said, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, went went to to college. Of course, they had a, co a, a local trade school at the at the college here locally. So I went there for a couple of years, working and you know, part time. But it worked out great. 
Yeah. Were you always in residential uh, service and replacement or did you do anything other than that? Sure. Yeah, definitely. We started off in commercial, right? Because that's okay. where everybody starts. They want to work for the union, I believe, right? Make good money and yeah. higher wages. So we start, I started there, but I realized that that wasn't my niche. So I decided to go into residential okay. uh, after about a year. And then it's been residential pretty much the whole time. Which yeah. like commercial, you know, like commercial is sure. what, we're, what we're doing. But yeah, most of it has been residential. I believe there's more bang for your buck in residential for a, sure. for a business owner, for myself. Sure. So, so you know, you, here you go, 2007. You really start dedicating yourself towards it. And Trina, you get you get pulled into it at some point. How how did you initially start growing your customer base? Was it just friends and family? And and is it just kind of rolled, uh, rolled downhill from there? Yeah, friends and family, and we started, you know, back then we did, you know, yellow pages. Okay. And oh, yeah, you had to be in the yellow pages. Sure. Oh, yeah. Now, that's that's pretty much the way that it was. Okay. Because I don't even think when we started the internet was too, too big. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yellow pages, We I know we used to do have offer members yellow pages. I mean, that was the big thing, right? Yellow pages was the was number one lead source. Try, try and get that two pages, yes. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, the, they're really good at selling people. That's right. Oh my yeah. Lord, they were, weren't they? Man, the phone book went everywhere. I realized just in this last week as Trina and I went and chopped down a Christmas tree, you know, it was fun. We went down to the farm, but cool. but it, it, it's in a local city, not too far from here, but I realized how impactful the yellow pages actually used to be mm -hmm. versus the internet because it would drop on everyone's porch. That was the old way of getting a hold of a plumber or an AC guy. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, 2007, you guys start, and I, you know, everyone that, that's watching, listening, remembers, right? <laughs> Not long after that, everything yeah, kind of got a little squirrely. So, uh, were you guys just small enough that you were able to weather that economic <laughs> storm, or, or you know, was it a struggle? Yes, it was a tough time. You yeah, know, yes, it, was. it, it, it was. I believe in 2008 is when it really impacted yeah. us. As far mm -hmm. as um, it was either, you know, uh, we we had to keep the business running and we had to pay our yellow book pages, and right. it, 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 yeah, that was a big part of it. But yeah, it, it, we didn't know better, right? As 2007, 2008, we're going out there, right? We got a little bit of money, refinanced the house. We said we're going to do this. Here we go. Yeah. Got a little bit of uh, assets and, and and we went for it, right? A little mm -hmm. bit of income and we went for it. So it was great. 2007, you know, at the end of it, it was wonderful. 2008 is when the storm came and we realized that, uh, you know, beans and rice didn't sound too bad, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, but it was it was it was challenging. You know, we did anything. I was I would even be a swamp cooler king, right? I would fix anything. It didn't matter what it was. If yeah. you called me, we could do it all. Almost yeah. a heavy man. Um, yeah. but we weathered the storm. Mm -hmm. We did. We weathered the storm. Came out of it in two thousand eight, and it was surprisingly well. By two thousand ten, um, we were doing okay as far as the mom and pop. Trina and I just working, working, working. Maybe we had sure. one or two employees. Okay, but we made it through that. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I don't All think right. We knew any better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you hear that. We, that. we sort of were so new. We're like, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Right. Well, if you're small enough and you just, you know, at least if money, some money's coming in, you just figure yeah. it out, right? Because it's lean times when you're first starting. Um, all right. So you said 2008 to 2010, you kind of got you kind of got through it. And then, you know, you you ran into us uh SGI in 2018. So how were those next eight years? Did you guys just steadily grow from there, add a few people here and there, kind of, or did you kind of pretty much stay at the same revenue level and kind of go, why can't we get through this? I've heard all sorts of things. So what, what happened in your guys' situation? I think we pretty much stayed in the new rep, the same revenue um, level. We at one time had gotten like a business coach, but even then the things that he would tell me, he would tell me about KPIs and things like that. And I just, wasn't even sure exactly what he was talking about. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until we we decided we had actually went to a profit day and oh, then okay. a business coach. So Patrick had told us, you're the only company that's ever came and literally grown because we had grown by some because we did put some things in the place that he was telling about. But then oh, we wow, just said, great. you know what? The difference between just one person to a whole team of 
coaches and yes. the networking, there's just no comparison. So we decided to, you know, we had to tell that coach, hey, we made a decision for to go another direction. And then we we ended up signing up. At, we went to a next, another profit day and we decided to jump on board with SGI. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So did how did we find you? Was it just did you get a cold call or or did you see some an advertisement of some sort? Yes, I believe it was Patty Myers. I'm almost saying I think her name was Patty. I don't know who it was, but I wasn't too sure if it was another Patty. But but we received a letter in the mail okay. um, for the first time and we decided to check it out, right? Um so we went down to San Diego. We we were there and we end up leaving, but then we ended up coming back a year later. And okay. We ended signing up again so it was great right we went back and the reason we did is is because there's such a large network in the sgi yeah. and sure. we realized that versus just one person who has uh, you know he has a great vision but i believe to um uh what's the word i'm looking for to to actually apply it uh he didn't have air marketing he wouldn't have networking as far as this other one as far as sgi so we realized that it's more bang for your buck and it looks like yeah. a better SGI is just just you know un uncomparable. So we so we went that route and it's it's been great. But yeah, I believe it was Patty Myers that actually sent us a letter or we spoke with Interesting. about yeah. Okay. Okay, and very good. Great. Let yeah. us go to these places, right? So I think I went the second time just to try the lunch, but no, I actually <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you you knew the second time you went, you were gonna you guys were signed. Yeah, 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 it was for sure, definitely. And, and we have uh one of our, our Len our Linux TM, our Linux uh territory manager, he uh really wanted to see us grow. We had become sort of friends with him and yeah. he had actually taken us out to an SGI member. Who sat down and talked with us and shared their success story with us? Oh, that's interesting. And then we were totally like bought in after that. Very yeah, good. yeah. I believe it was that networking as far as sitting down and and showing us how well their they they uh, their growth was and how successful they were. Mm -hmm. And it was tangible. It was actually you know it was there in front of us. So right. it was true to life. Sure. And we wow, this thing can really work. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great success story. That's why I believe it's so important to reach out to new members or our potential member and let them see the the, the real life of, of how, what's going on behind the yeah. scenes of before they join it. That's great. That's good stuff. Now, when before, before you guys, you know, had joined, you said you kind of flattened out revenue wise. Were you were you making money or mm -hmm. were you just kind of getting by? I mean, I, I know all sorts of stories again. So what was your situation? Bye. Yeah, we, were by. we would always save our money. We would say to put it yeah. in the bank, say, hey, you know, when you start a business, I'm rich again. All right. And then, yeah. it as it goes slow, as, it's, as it slows down, <laughs> as it slowed down, she would. Yeah, I'd, I'd save money through the busier times. And it sure. seemed like every time it slowed down, I had to take that money I was saving, you know, for us. And I'd have to put it back in the business to flow payroll, to, to cover the bills, to just get by. Sure. I'll be honest, I probably wasn't even tracking a net profit, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, do I have money in the bank? You know, right. that was sort of the way um, that we lived and it was it check was, to check almost for a yeah, while. It, it yeah. just yeah. like that, not There's, paying ourselves because we needed to make sure we paid the guys. Um, right. Yeah. So a lot of mistakes. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, but you did what you did to, to keep going. I mean, you know, you guys got got through it. I mean, so many small businesses don't make it. You see the statistics, so uh, yeah. it's it's quite the accomplishment. You, you got through the rough patch, and now it's it's why it's awesome to see you guys and all. You know, the, so many other members I get to talk to uh, ascend and and really uh, build something special. So, um, all right, so let's talk. So you joined. Uh, or you went to the first profit day. You didn't join, but you made some changes. You remember what some of those early changes were in between the two profit days? that you guys said, oh, let's try that to see if this actually works. No, uh, not waiving our service call. No okay. free service call. Charging right. a service call, getting our pricing um, right, getting our price book right. Correct. Me figuring out my chart of accounts and getting it lined up with SGI's model, talking to Patty, reaching out to other members. So those, I think, are some of the 
first thing that we did, right? So that, so that was after EP. That was that. Yeah, after EP. Was after yeah. EP. Oh, you mean okay. even before EP? What did we do? Yeah, because I think you said you went to two pro two profit days. The first one, you said, you know, let's just see if a few of these things work that they talk about, right? Hey, I don't blame you. There's no wrong. Yeah, they definitely did. You know what? We actually rolled out earlier with the price book before we went to EP. Yeah. I kind of, yeah, I actually had a sample book, and I I said, this is what we're using, guys. And I think I made copies of it. And I said, here, I put it in their hands. And I said, run with it. I said, we're going to have some trial. We're going to figure out what's going on. We're okay. going to see if this thing works. Yeah. Do you remember, um, in, in this, again, no, no training on it, right? You just had a, a copy of it. You didn't even customize it really yet. How did, uh, how did those first calls go? Were they rough or did you start all of a sudden making a little bit more money? You know what? We actually did. I believe it was smoother. Yeah. yeah. Right? Put yeah. it in their hands. I mean, I trained them a little as okay. far as what we could do because we did have the the uh, the coach down, the mentor down in the desert, who who kind of showed us the script just to a point, you know, real minimum. And I and uh, it was very it was very profitable. I believe it was less problems presenting it that way than it yeah. was when we were doing it ourselves, just throwing a number out there. Yeah. Right. Because it was printed. Yeah. It was actually very successful. Yeah. But, they were, you know, and, and as the guys did it, they really enjoyed it. So it was it was an easy transition. Once we started printing it, it, it was almost seamless. That's great. That's great. That's great. Now, yeah. Trina, you said uh, so no more waving of service calls. You were the one answering the phones, right? And you yeah. still. Yeah, very good. So did you like to street through some scripting or how did, or you just said, you know what? I'm just going to wing it and say I'm not, you know, it is what it is. You know what it was learning the script. Um, making it my own, but I just learned that you needed to bring value to that service call and use those key words that bring value. And I thought for sure people are going to be like, no way. But right. you know what? We didn't get that much kickback, you know, right. every once in a while. And even still now, every once in a while. Sure. Um, but and then going through the training, like the telephone essentials yeah. and uh, just learning that on how to present. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it was a little challenging at first. I was thinking, how are we not going to charge a free service call? What's wrong? Who's doing this? Yeah, gonna lose it. I didn't think, you know, I'll be honest. I was kind of had some some kickback saying this isn't going to work. <laughs> right? I love the coaching. It's great. But I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. Right. And to our surprise, it wasn't too much kickback. That's great. Well, you went to the training. I think that adds confidence, right? That's why I always yeah. tell yes. I tell people uh, it's funny. I've been doing this a long time, and and everyone I talk to is a, who I consider is a success story is they go to they go to EP and then they they find their way into training soon, yes. so they can learn how to use the tools a little bit better. So, Rocky, did you? I'm assuming you went to some kind of either the technician training or comfort advisor training right away, or what did you what did you do? Yeah, we did. We went down into the desert once again with, you know, okay. make SD, the, the phrase is make SD your bestie. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing that more and more. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So she's my California bestie. You that's know, we cool. love her. So we actually went out there and, and as we went to the training, um, you know, we're, you know, as men, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to learn all this. And we sat down and we listened to SD and I was thinking, I don't know how this is going to go, but I was blown away by her, yeah. by her training. It was it was remarkable. So we went there, sat down, learned about the service essentials, the etiquette of the you know you know all the as far as the service essentials is uh, as far as going to the door, how to present yourself, and it's wonderful. Yeah. After that, we went to the comfort advisor classes. Every yeah. single class that they had to offer, I was in. Yeah. And I literally would just shut down. Um, the business and send my guys because I believe that it was going to be more profitable for us to go rather than to miss it because I believe that we would lose if we didn't end up sending it, uh, our guys and and it's it's been remarkable. Right. So it's yeah. an investment, right? You know that yeah. week of time where it, it, it's hard. I get it because there's no revenue coming in or limited. But yeah, limited, it, correct. But it, it 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 sure blossoms once once you get back. So. Yes. Um, and now in those, you know, a couple of years ago, it was you and what you said, your sons were primarily selling and, and, and in the field. Yeah, correct. It was us, right? Most of the time it was, it was Rocky as our comfort advisor. And yeah. um, then we had technicians and sometimes we would, you know, they would flip something into a sale. Um, but, you know, honestly, we didn't even really know about flipping leads. Okay. You know? 
And uh, so that has been remarkable um, yeah. I, this year and really focusing on that and having my um, coach, Chris Vance, is holding us accountable on that and just making sure that we're training. Um, I think it's increased by at least three to four times this wow. year from last yeah. year. That's I great. Think, yeah. That's great. Yeah. But so as you started, once again, you know, my yeah. boys, I have four sons. And okay. They had no life. They were my helpers. They would carry my bags. We we literally have a picture of them. There's two of them. One holding the umbrella for dad, and the other <laughs> holding my two bags with the flashlight. Up. It depends on on the situation. Yeah. We actually had a photo from the the local newspaper came out and took our picture. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So it was awesome. But but our boys have been with this ball and chain all summer long. <laughs> <laughs> so I owe I owe them so much, but yeah. but it was it, yeah it was definitely a family business. They would help me out. I would go. I would hire as I as I needed. Right. Um. But it was always challenging because we couldn't always keep our guys busy when we first yeah. started. Of course, right. sure. it was always seasonal. Summertime is great, but then we had a high turnover rate during the winter. The sure. fall time. It's always and it and it's been that way prior to us all the way up to prior to us joining SGI. Mm -hmm. Was that where you're not selling a, a maintenance agreement or a club membership of any sort? Yeah, not enough of that and making sure that they got booked and not okay. really getting um I think it was know, a combination of everything into as far as the whole system. We didn't have a system. We no. just just waited by the phone like the Maytag guy right. for the phone ring, right? Is ring? How come yeah. the phone isn't ringing we don't have any work, you know? Not right. cool calling or going out there to get there and making sure, hey, this is right here. We're going to hit it about, you know, our comfort club memberships and then knowing that we should have an average ticket on those things. <laughs> sure. You know? So, yeah. Sure. That's a lot. I mean, it's a lot, you know, and, and unless you, someone tells you about it, you don't learn it in school, right? It's not like right. in high school, they tell you how, how to run a business, let alone an HVAC business. So, right. you right. know, if you don't know, you don't know. Um, so that's interesting. So Rocky, when did you get out of the field full time? Was that just recently or are you still in there off and on? You know what? Actually, recently is when I've actually started pulling away. Pulling back, yeah. In the last, I believe this year. This year, okay. yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah, this year. And, and every every so often. I, I believe sure. it was a little bit last year, maybe in 2019, but it's been more this year. I'm actually yeah. pulled out of the field. But then I miss it, so I want to <laughs> You know, I understand. Get out there, you know. But, but it's it's been a little bit more as far as marketing, working on the business yeah. um, aspect. Yeah. So it's been a it's it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. You're at the size where it's it's a there's a lot of transition, right? Where yeah. that means you got to get out and start and start growing it versus being in it. So um, it's tough. It's tough for for most guys for sure. It is very tough. Yeah, very challenging because it's uh, it feels like as a business owner you need to stay busy. Like yep. if you're not busy, you're not really doing it. And I, I, I was reading a book about that. So I, I believe that uh, as a business owner, we need to pull ourselves back and really look at the whole picture right. rather than just tunnel vision when you're in it. So, you know, work on, hey, what can what can the business do to grow? And it's been it's been pretty good. Yeah. Thanks to SGI. Literally. Yes. Yes. It's changed. Support for this podcast comes from Paul Sam. Pulse M is the number one review generation platform built for home services. The majority of SGI members use Pulse M for Google reviews, customer communication through text messaging, and much more. For more information, please visit pulsem.me. Welcome back to the show. I'm talking with Rocky and Trina Lozano of Air One air conditioning, heating, and plumbing in Colton, California. So far, we've learned about their history in the business as well as some of the early changes they made to turn the company around. And in the second half of this interview, Rocky and Trina will share all sorts of nuggets on how they've eliminated their shoulder seasons, improved their hiring, and so much more. So let's jump back into my conversation with Rocky and Trina Lozano of Air One Air Conditioning, Heating, and Plumbing in Colton, California. Well, let's go ahead and keep talking about training because it's important to go to outside training to kind of get yourself centered right and to, and to learn what you don't know but then you got to communicate that to everybody else right you know if you're going to continue to grow so what what do you guys do for for continuous training today how frequently are you meeting uh what are you talking about kind of maybe share with everyone what you, what you guys do for training today that's trina's department but shout out to wesley go ahead trina yeah so right now we're meeting three times a week we meet monday wednesday and friday um what some Wesley helped me with putting together a training calendar. So yep. what we do on the first Friday, but of the very beginning of the month, we talk about our numbers, what we need to, you know, what our goal is 
in service, in maintenance, in sales, and um, just getting the guys to now daily um, or at least three times a week, um, putting up their numbers on the board. That's great. Um, if somebody doesn't come directly in because maybe they take their truck home, then we're letting them, calling them, and we're we're putting them up on the board so that they know where they're at. Um, yeah. Because you know what you're not held accountable for, right? It's not going to be accomplished. That's right. Um, so then on Wednesday, sometimes we do more technical training. Right now, we've been training with Dynamic Air. Um, yeah. And talking about that because that's something right now in, in California, the weather is it's like 80 today. It's like sure. perfect. You pull out. It's so right. when you want to do a club membership, <laughs> it's a little hard to say, hey, there's a part going out on your heater when you're not turning your heater on. So people put that off. So we really want to tap into the IAQ. Yeah. And then Fridays are fun Fridays. We buy them breakfast. We celebrate wins. Um, last week, I we played Family Feud. I got little buggers <laughs> off of Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and we did, we did family feud on dynamic air on indoor air quality so That's i came cute. you know i sit in in the training and i come up with questions to ask and got a little competitive up there but you know it made it fun and it helps them really think about the the training that we went through yeah, um that's great. Great. so sometimes we will have vendor training and a lot of times like right now we just rolled out the frustrated contractor so we did role playing on that Put it in the guy's hands. What are the key words that we want to express this? Because as you're going on these comfort clubs, this is a great turnover. I think last week we got like four turnovers, and most of them were from, from comfort club, club members. Um, and so it's just talking about that really great deal, doing a lot of role playing, yeah. um, and really bringing the team in on it. When we okay. were on vacation, I had, like my son Richard, I had him... You know, I want you to um, um, be a part of leading these meetings or our sales uh, comfort consultant, Jason, having him be a part of that, too, because I think it's super important. Um, we've become a part of Culture Index as well. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. That's oh, an investment. My, yeah, that is an investment. But I'm telling everyone right now, it is probably one of the best investments besides SGI you could do for your company. Wow. Because I learned from this who needs to have a seat at the table. Okay, interesting. And I learned yes. that you need to bring people into that. And when yeah. they that will buy them into your company. When okay. you learn to read people, different personalities and all that, it's it's super cool. But yeah. anyways, so that's what we're doing with the training. And that's we're exciting. On that too, definitely. Yeah, we have training with uh, she's going to come in and our rep and speak with, you know, our our team on this Friday too, so that we'll do that on our fun Friday as well. Yeah, that's that training is remarkable. Yeah, because yeah. you might have the right person in the wrong position. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's, and it's wonderful. Yeah, and that's actually changed our culture a whole bunch as yes. well. Yes. Okay. You know, we have our mentors, which are uh, uh, CM Heating and Air. Oh, we went to visit them. Yeah, great good group. guys. Oh, good group. Well, wonderful guys. So what we did is, you know, the best secret is the best. You know, best secret is this is a stolen. The best idea is the best idea is a stolen idea. idea. I know where you're going. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was going with that, right? yeah. So I'm just mimicking them in California, right? Yeah. But they're great. Yeah, they had they had all this as well. But but our training is phenomenal. We we strive on training, train, train, train. We have sometimes wiring Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We have vendors coming in, but I believe that that our culture is uh, the model of SGI as far as the etiquette, the way that we dress, the way that we present. And it's it's so important. It's I, I, It might be so redundant, but it actually helps them. And then like Trina always makes it fun for us. Sure. I want to chase this, the, the culture index thing just a little bit more. You said you, you, you brought certain uh, people in, that you know, based on their culture index score that they want to feel that ownership. So is that just sitting down one on one and going where, where do you think we need training or what do you you know do, what are those conversations like for those that are that are watching listening to this? Well, I have an idea for something and it's actually going it's called the Air One Roundtable. And okay. those people that I see and through their culture index personality traits um, that there are certain people that if they do not feel a part of something or or have a seat at the table, you could very easily lose them. And so I want to have something where there's key component players in the business sit down and give ideas like, hey, so what do you think about this, you know, and have them put their input and um, and just give ideas. But, yeah, sometimes it is one on one. Sometimes it's, hey, can you help me on this 
this meeting today, but it's something because we just went to culture index training last month. Last month. Oh wow, yeah, it's fresh. And so it is fresh. Yeah. Um, and it's something you've got to keep exercising because, like anything, if you're not using it, then you lose it. You know. Yeah, Correct. for so sure. It is. It, it is like almost like you feel like there's somebody recording. <laughs> <laughs> Like yes. How, how do they know? Yeah. Oh, there, there's got to be a camera. I keep on yeah. telling the trainers. There's got to be a camera. Here, but so. what's amazing is that even before you start start your 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 hiring process, you send them a survey okay. to see if they're going to fit your your company. And you can set up a match for what you're looking at a certain position and see if they're even that match. You see that they are that match, or maybe they're putting in for a certain you know they're putting in for install, but you see that they score high for a selling tech. Yeah. You know then then that's you you know where to put somebody like yeah. find somebody social you you don't want to keep them in an install position because that's not their drive they need to sure. be with people and they'll be really good at probably upselling and yeah and such. yeah have you have you been able to make some hires based on that or okay. or not made some hires based on that oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yes okay. both so yeah. realize somebody that has uh, you know, somebody that recently decided to 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 go in a different direction, um, they might have not been the best fit for the position they're in. So it was probably better for them. Right. Um, but in the hiring process, when we made the match, we had a potential hire. He was at 97 percent. He was a craftsman um, and he fit the match that we had created 97 um, percent. But then you learn the things the way that somebody's driven as well. But we realized somebody at our, on our team right now was at a 97% as well. Yeah. So right now in the process of the frustrated contractor uh, rolling out, that's going to be a good way for us now to have those two install crews. Because we'll right. that potential. But that person was potential for another position. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and we realized that he was comfortable with that because some people are just comfortable with install. Some people are, are, are maybe be a little bit frightened to sell. Sure. So it's perfect. We hired actually our comfort consultant based on index culture as well. Yeah. Okay. So another yeah. company ran it for us and they told us you need to have a, I would hire this person um, and that this person is perfect for the job. If they walked into my company, I would yeah. hire them today. You need to already have your, um, your proposal, your job offer ready when he comes in. Correct. So that's Close what him. we did. Yeah. And yeah. It's been amazing, and he has been. Jason has has just become this. I mean, he he is. He's yeah, gonna be a he crowd champion. Great. He's gonna be a crowd awesome. champion. Yeah, right. yes, he That's, will. But it's a, but it's a game changer in yeah. culture. I would say add it. So so as you look into people's companies that are successful, that's what I saw as far as looking into CM, how they've grown so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like what are what are some of the avenues they're taking? What's their success, right? And some of the things they are is they've implemented a culture index. So it, yeah. it's a game changer. Yeah. It's a difference That's between, between a hundred thousand dollar salesman and a million dollar salesman. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or a two hundred fifty thousand dollar tech or even less than that to a half a million you know turning over leads and upselling and all that all right. so yeah yeah i'm glad you i'm glad you brought that up because before we get into more recruiting and, and how you because i want to talk about more of that but you said flipping leads you know and selling clubs so again that's that's training right so that's talking right. about it what um you know because I, I when you said you tripled i think the number of leads you flipped i'm sure there's a bunch of members or other if non-members are in the hvac that went whoa what are they doing I want to do that. So kind of to share with, with everyone, what did you do to change the focus on that or to get people or your text to go, we really need to make that a priority? Is it just talking about it all the time or did you create some additional training for it or goals or incentives or what did you do to make flip leads more important to everybody and so that they understood how their value? I think we have a great team right now that wants to see us succeed. So when I started showing them, hey, this is where we need to be for our sales and replacement. And, and even learning um, from when we went up to CM Heating that the just they when I sat down with Brandon, he's like, I don't know what's missing. Is <laughs> it, you yeah. guys have a great image, you're priced right. I don't know what it is. Rocky had went on um went on a ride along and okay. you know what it was, it was sales. Yeah. That was it. 
sales. All roads lead to install. The Comfort Club member yeah. for the eventual install. The service is still to keep a customer happy till the eventual install. Okay, so that's so what we started focusing on. Yeah, so with integrity. With course. integrity. We're not so, flipping, selling something somebody doesn't yeah, want. Sure. We're plant that yeah. seed. But just talking to the guys. So we started even, we changed even the way, you know, we started incentivized even for getting a lead where we right. get it home. And okay. um, so and the training, I stole that from CMB yeah, yeah. too yeah, as well. Best idea. Yeah, but so it's just talking about it. Training, um, we've done um, uh, role playing on it. Yes. Um, okay. Get, right now, everybody has come, uh, the frustrated contractors in their hand. The letters hand yeah. delivered those uh, to the customers. Yeah. So yeah, that's so. So doing. some of the biggest parts on training on that is. The, uh, the 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 repair versus the replacement, the yeah. cost calculator. Yeah. Okay. So, so that is a big part of it, and we've asked our guys about that, and and, and funny because our technicians have actually stepped up and said, um, one of our most successful technicians said, "This is what I use. We should be using this." Yeah. And and he brought it out again. So what I've done is on our comfort club. I'm sorry, on our comfort system performance report. system performance report. There's yep. so many service so comfort system. <laughs> on the system performance, performance report, report, what I do is I actually put the cost of repair versus replacement on the back of it. Oh, okay. So what it is is and it, it's a hard copy of a, a thick kind of carbon paper, but it's yep. like stock paper, stock paper. Sure. And then I put it on the back of that. And then on the other side of it, the inside of it. It has coupons, right? So we rip it off and we leave it with the customer. Yeah. Um, but but the great part about that is if it's not in front of you, you're not going to utilize it. So what I do is I put it in their hands to have that discussion because as technicians, we've gone to school to learn to fix your AC, <laughs> fix everything. Right. But it's it's a hard thing to have that conversation. So what we do is we make it easy for them and put it on the back. So we have training where we actually go over the cost calculator with, with our customer That's and good. each other. So we start in house. Yeah. Tell them we can do it with each other. We can do it out, out, outside. So that's really what it boils down to is the cost calculator. And then in turn, we, we also give a free consultation. So some of our options, I, I saw SD on, on their uh, offering estimates uh, as far as your options. So one would be a, the, the, a repair. One would be a, a, you know, a, a major repair, and then the other would be a free consultation. Okay. So those are some of the things that we do in order to get it as far as if it's over the older, older than 10 years, then we have that difficult con conversation with our customers, but that's pretty much what it is. It, yep. no one, because in the technician's mind, you have to convince them first before they're going to convince the customer. Right. So if you can get it in, in you know, ingrained in, in, in the technician's, uh, it will just help out because it's easy. The cost versus replacement, right? It's a thousand dollars now. Hey, yeah. that's a year's worth of payments. Let's have that discussion. So yeah. I make it easier for them. Those are some good nuggets right there. Did um, did the you know the system performance report and the option building? Did you guys do that early on right away, or is that something you've just kind of really learned and embraced over the last year or so? I think we did do it some, but I think in the last year, because I think yeah. even even first. Coming on to SGI, it it it's a lot, and yeah. you learn to work on certain things, yeah. and you learn to work on other things. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to go back to culture index really quick because in my um, you know, I'm I and I've shared this even when I was at SGI and did one of the workout breakouts. I don't really care for bookkeeping all the time. Sure. And I realized, well, that's just because that's the way that I'm wired. I'm visionary. Right. So I'm the person that's going to drive that top line and think of ideas and things. So I really feel like doing culture index on myself, um, you know, when we had another company do it back in, when was it, May? Mm -hmm. It really showed that that drive. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think that in the last year or so, we've been, you know, really putting more things into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to implement them. Sure, sure. Now, I'm assuming you have club sales also been really in, ramped up lately as well, in addition to the, okay, now, is that, what have you done to, to, to improve those? Is it just always including them in the options or just training on, on you know, the value builders of it or, or you know, a combo of that, or, or what do you guys say? Yeah, I believe it is both. 
uh, we we get in front of them as far as you know this is how we can prevent some things uh, as far as uh, you know some some failures on top of that as well is the discounts right everybody wants to save it's you know it's after Thanksgiving Black Friday sales <laughs> I'm literally shopping right now I got another screen open on the left of you here and I'm gonna price the stuff. <laughs> so I believe you know it, it, people love to save you know so sure. I, we we actually incentivize them you know as far as the customer and giving them that deduction and I believe it's alluring to them and they yeah. feel and as far as far as seeing value in our company as, as our image I believe they want to be a part of the club membership. Uh, and we just tell them, you know, hassle free. We want to de hassle our customers. Just make it problem free for them. Let us take care of you. We offer a service. Trina and I were having a conversation this morning as far as just the service that we offer, right? Yeah. And I always go back to a restaurant. You know, you, you have that just that great service, even though you can get something cheaper somewhere else yeah. at the local grocery store, but it's the service that you offer. So I believe that sets us above. And, and, and comfort club members are really seeing our value in, in, in conjunction to our reviews and the things that we okay. have out there. So, yeah. So, so you, you guys train on on how to ask for those reviews as well and you make that a priority. Yeah, yeah we do. Yes. Yeah. So, so with the software we have, it incorporates it. It actually asks them again. Plus, we're, we're, we signed up with Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. So for Oh, every, yeah. Just like every, CM. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. for every, they're going to buy us, hopefully, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah, for every review, we donate, what, $10 to, yeah. to our local branch or local area, mm -hmm. make a okay. wish. So, and, and I believe that gets the, the community involved as yeah. far as the humanitarian part mm -hmm. of it. Um, and, and people love that. So we get we get good reviews. That's that's great. That's fantastic. Now, now you guys, Trina, you mentioned it really early on that you go, why are the phones ringing during those shoulder months, right? So now you've got more club members, and you're not just sitting there, right? You're, you're, when, you, when did you start outbound calling, uh, and, and how did you kind of, you know, teach yourself how to do those? I mean, you were just reading the scripts that we we provide, or, right. or how did, when did you start doing that? How did you start doing that? Um, we did some light outbound calling before, but I like I, I really feel like this year we have um, in the software we have, we can pull a we miss you report. Yeah. So we'll pull a we miss you report for maybe like six months prior and then go a little bit backwards. So it's somebody we recently were at and just offering them a maintenance special, but also outbounding for with our club memberships. Um, another thing. Um, we would sometimes have problems with people saying, you know, when you have, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred club members, it, it, it can be a little challenging to call sure. everyone. So we'll send out now a postcard as well. Um, I send out a postcard that has actually a dirty filter on it. Um, oh. I sort of feel like that's eye catching to them. Yeah. And just to let them know that it's time to book. So whenever I send those out, it actually will get people calling in as well. Um, but then we can also text. Okay. So, I'll let them know when they outbound, call and text them and make sure you leave a voicemail if they don't answer, just call and text them so that we're just, we're reaching out in that way as well. That's great. Now, who does all the calling out? Do you, does it, is it split up amongst the, the crew it's there? Stars, yeah, yeah, they do it. That's mm -hmm. excellent. And is there any kind of, uh, you, you know, I, I guess it's just, is there, there's no spiffs involved. You're not selling clubs over the phone, right? They're just trying to. Yeah. If, yeah. They, if they do sell a club over the phone, then they get a spiff. But if it's a cold call, not yeah. a club member, but a cold call, then they get a spiff for that if they're able to sell that. Okay. And that's, right. we do that at about half the cost of the comfort club. Yeah. And I feel like that also sets the technicians up. Hey, you know, we can come back out or they can sell a club with that you know, that special that we're offering on an $89 uh, maintenance. Yeah, sure. Their main focus is to get the board filled. If it's not yeah. filled, let's get it filled up. Get it filled. Let's incentivize right. them. Let, let's, let's get the, the customer involved. Let's give them a call. Let's give them some type of, you know, discount uh, just to keep, you, you know, just to keep it running. Yeah, Main, yeah. Yes. Who, who's setting the board every day? Is that Rocky? Are you doing that, Trina? Are you doing that? Like setting what, what texts are going to what calls based on the age of the system and and what the potential repair is? Who or do you guys do that together in unison or how do you ours, guys manage ours do it and they do it with, with me or with Rocky, but a lot of times they're sort of CSR dispatchers, a little hybrid yeah. there. Yeah. And and they'll and like my son Andrew, since he's been with us so long, he really yeah. knows which tech would be best for this. And I believe that's important. That. Yeah. I believe the tech is who's the best fit. Because yeah. most of the time you want to send 
possibly a you know a, a season tech to go out there. We have guys that are techie. We have guys that will, customers totally love them, right? They want to hug them as soon as they come. <laughs> so it depends on that one, right? If we have yeah. a customer who's giving us a little bit of kickback, then we send the guy that everybody wants to hug because then they just fall in love with them, right? So yeah. I, I believe depending on their skills and their personality, that's how we dispatch. What is it? Dispatch for profit. Profits. Yeah. Right? Very good. Yeah. Now, now you guys mentioned software a couple of times, so I have to ask, what are you guys utilizing? Service Titan. Oh, you are using Service Titan. Very good. Now, when did you guys implement when, implement that? Uh, I think it's been about three years now, 2018. Around the same time yeah. as yeah. SGI. That's a lot of change. That's a whole lot of change. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> there was a lot going on. I think that's why it took us a while to yeah, figure it did. out what it is. Yeah. 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 But, but also, it, and I know that uh, Service Line also does that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's reporting. Uh, you need to, to to pull that data. Data is what is it? Data and God we trust is as, as Brandon would say. And God we trust. Yeah. Everything else, data. Everything else, we <laughs> data. <laughs> data, 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 data. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Yes, yeah. because you know you mentioned that early in the interview. You said, "Well, you didn't really know what what the numbers were. You didn't know what a KPI was." So. Mm -hmm. How did the, well, you know, and you, you got your chart of accounts set up, right? So yeah. that starts from that foundational, and then you learn your numbers all the way to the front of KPIs. How long did that take you guys to kind of grapple that and understand that and and then kind of manage your business by those KPIs and, and you know, and those numbers? I think within this last year. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, I understood some of it, um, but a lot of reaching out to Patty Myers. Yeah. She's the guru. Um, and I love that I could ask her a question and she never makes you feel like you don't know what you're doing. So, yeah, with that and, you know, so reaching out to my coach, Chris Van yeah. um, and Jeff Kenyon from oh, Castle. Yeah. Oh, he's he's been such a big help and I can always ask him questions. So good people. Mm -hmm. That's it's, good. Just, it's just the map that sort of shows you where you need to be like, oh, yeah, 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 I need to fix this. And yeah. And then you know what you do when you realize you got to fix something? You train. You yeah. train on that. Yeah. You know, if your labor's cost is high, okay, look at your pricing, which I think we're going to be doing a price increase probably, I I say, like December and yeah, raising sure. our service call. And um, But, you know, if, if you know, you, you're getting zero tickets, because sometimes that, you know, we struggle with that a little bit with our club members this year. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to train. We're going to train on IEQ. We're going to train on um, flipping leads, you know? So. Yeah, good stuff. Do you guys have a few more minutes? Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? Yeah, we're yeah, good. We're good. Awesome. Yeah. I know we're hitting that hour. I try to keep it, but you, I, there's a few more things I wanted to ask you. Um, you mentioned the frustrated contractor and, and, and what you guys are doing unique with it. Kind of share with everyone, first of all, what that is that don't know what it is, and so at least have they have some background. You're the expert in that yeah, a little i just put it together in the back end <laughs> but so so what it is it, it's a it's a way to keep your guys busy ultimately in yeah. in the in the shoulder season right people don't want to say shoulder but it happens in cal outbound, sure. outbound season, right? before, yeah. when there's no weather when you're trying to keep your guys busy it is a remarkable piece of equipment piece of a uh, piece of uh, marketing that can help you to be successful last year we tried it Mm -hmm. And and we did have a little uh, uh, outbreak at the last expo, but it was I believe we invested twenty one thousand to twenty five thousand give or take because we extended it. Um, yeah, and I, I think we sold our total sales were almost up to three seventy mm -hmm. three eighty. Wow, so it was cool. a great return on investment. Yeah. But what was great about it is that we were super busy. Margins ain't the best all the time. Yeah. Uh, but as far as as keeping consistency, keeping the guys busy, it was wonderful during that time. I, I'll be honest; I think we were bit we were we were busier in the winter than we were in the summer because <laughs> we were running. My guys were like, "Wait a minute! I thought we were supposed to get a break." But what it does is it offsets, you know, the the those those slower the, the weather seasons because yeah. what we we sent out this letter. The letter is a a deal where we give a free furnace. You know what we do is work with all our vendors, and we work with uh, commissions. There's a lot that goes into it. There's some math, yeah. but but at the end of the day, what it does is it get, it helps your vendor to sell, move equipment during the slow season, and it helps you to stay busy. Yeah. 
yeah. and it worked out very well for us. We're just rolling out with it as a speak as today. The letter should be hitting to our existing customers, and then every week we're sending out like twenty five hundred okay. uh, letters a week. So you know, you 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 wait the first three weeks uh, before you send it out to the general public, yeah. which is I think we're going to send it out to almost sixty thousand people. Okay. Afterwards. Wow. So we're yeah. really we're really going to hit it because it was so successful, but it's great. Yeah, it, it's wonderful. So we stay really busy, and for that person that is, you know, looking for that, uh, for that extra help as far as keeping the guys busy, which you know, small businesses, it's it's always a struggle. How are we going to keep them busy when there's no weather? Yeah. This is a great avenue. Yeah, and and airtime members listening or watching, that's an airtime tool. You can talk to your coach about how to how to get that and how to set it up. Um, now, did you say your guys will actually put it in people's hands? Will they bring it with them? Uh, that, that's something I don't know that I've heard that often. So maybe talk about that. How do they actually just say, hey, this is a great deal we have, and here, take a, take a look at it? So yeah. Trina's great. What she did is she she went to the to the local office, free office depot. depot, right, in conjunction. Yeah. We, we also deal with, with some of our vendors as well for that big quantity, but we printed about 100 of them up. Yeah. And yeah, and I, I printed them up and I folded them the exact way that you're supposed to do. And I put it in the guy's hands and I said, I told him to talk about that. We had, um, oh, it's a limited exclusive offer. Those are the, hey, I want to tell you about this limited exclusive offer. And yeah. I said, and make sure that you, you let them know if they have an older system or maybe they know somebody would do it um, and hand that out. And then, the, then another idea that we have is our installers when they go out they go they clover the houses and hand deliver a letter we want to let you know about this special offer That's that your, your neighbor just you know just uh took part in um so yeah i put them in the in the trucks with the guys yeah. to give out to to the customers so it's it's actually it's great because as you do that free consultation or as the the system is a little bit older and you're trying to turn that over say hey we have a great deal right now yeah did i have you heard about this offer that we're offering? You can put it in their hands. They can read it. We actually had a customer last week or the week prior say, this is such a great deal. I cannot pass it up. Yeah. yeah. I was just, wow, it works, right? <laughs> so, so we put it in their hands and, and we give them that, uh, that, that option to, to offer it to our customers, which is That's great. Nice. I yeah. like that. I like how you guys have taken it a little bit, a step further. So, but Correct. Yeah, but no, again, those those air members who are watching it, that letters work for twenty years, and it it still yeah. works. So it you know talk talk to your coaches if you're not utilizing, if you're worried about those those shoulder months coming up. And I know everyone's shoulder months are a little different based on where you are. So yes, yeah. excellent. All right, just a couple uh, last questions for you guys. Um, business is really moving in the right direction. You guys can obviously see are are very excited about it. So what what do you what are the goals for the next five or ten years? Do you do you have anything mapped out or are you just taking it year by year and hoping to grow uh, revenue and profit or what do you think? Our goal is for next year to be at least at least at 2.5 and um, the next goal is to get a, a manager, even if okay. he's a field manager that's over service and yeah. install. Um, to relieve that some from my husband and uh, just to help us going in the, the that direction and also to buy uh, a building. So that is oh, our goal within the next exactly. year and a half. Um, we need the market to come down, obviously, a little bit. It can be expensive out here, but uh, that that is the goal. And that's also towards towards our retirement, you know, is is purchasing a building, um, whatever that yeah. lays in the future. We do. Yeah. We have a five year goal. Of course, we want to be up to, uh, you know, at least 15 to 20 in the next five years. That'd with growth. So one year growth, um, one year uh, uh, profit, one year growth, one year profit, because especially with the market going that. up right now. But um, yeah, just take it slow. I don't want to grow, have too much fast growth without the structure, because I believe we could trip over that. Yeah. No, I, I, that's, that's really wise. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that, that say, you don't know what you don't know until you've grown and you get in that situation You go, Oh, we didn't plan for this. We planned a lot, but we didn't plan for this. So that's smart that you're giving yourself a little bit of a buffer. That's great. Um, I guess just kind of in, in wrapping up, what would you say to other SGI members who maybe are newer or are struggling that cause they just, maybe they just joined up and you know, how to get things moving in the right direction. Like you guys have. Drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's funny. I love that. I love that. SGI works. Do yeah. you know what? You're never going to be 100%. Not yeah. even the 
biggest hundred million dollar company is just take little bites. The way, what do they say? The way to eat a frog is, you know, bite, bite, bite. Um, yeah. You do what you can right now. And you might find yourself excelling in one area and sucking in the other. And that's okay. <laughs> that's right. Just grow. Uh, reach out to other members. Ask for help. And don't be too hard on yourself. You know, just don't be too hard that's on right. yourself. That's what yeah. I would say. I would say also is the system. Mm -hmm. Stick to the system. Stick to the program. Right? Don't, don't try to implement you know, uh, the person over here, this person over here, this person, and then make your own network, but just stick to the SGI model, follow it, and just slowly just start to roll out with, with certain things, right? Pick a few things and, and complete those, then move on to the, the next three. But it's important to stick to the system. I emphasize that so much when I mentor anyone. Uh, stick to the system and you'll slowly grow. Yeah. It takes time, uh, but you'll be there, Yeah, uh, right? That's good stuff. Now, I know just you guys mentioned when you were, you know, I don't know, five, six years ago, you were just working and working and working. And before we, I hit record on this, you were, you were talking about the trips you're going on and, and how nice is it to be able to get away from the business and, and have some fun and, and enjoy your hard work? How, how, how nice is that? That's awesome. So what we're going to say is when we went to the second profit day they told us what did they tell us they told us that how would you like to be able to be on a beach and your business just running the way that it should so yeah that's what we're striving for that's, so we're striving for. for. that's why we're there. <laughs> sometimes we need a break you know because yeah we, do, we work long days and everything but yeah. um it is a great peace of mind when you when you leave and you know that you're you know you've been training your team and you put people in positions to make sure things are running. I mean, it's amazing to be sitting on a beach or on a pool in Cancun and find out somebody's selling jobs. That's, great. That, that's a great, great feeling. And yeah, that is great. Feeling. Yeah. Good for you guys. You guys are a lot of fun. Rocky and Trina, thank you so yeah. very, very much for all your time today. And all you guys dropped some really good nuggets on, on different things that you guys are doing. I think people are going to get some value out of. So thank you for all your insight and, and all your time. And I look forward to seeing you guys sometime soon. Maybe uh, the next expo, if not sooner. Be there. Yes, we'll be, we'll there. be there. Thank you. All thank right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for all your time. Okay. All, right. all right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. That's Rocky and Trina Lozano of Air One Air Conditioning, Heating and Plumbing in Colton, California. Thanks for joining us. If you feel like you have a great story worth sharing that would also help other contractors, email me at bhouchin at yoursgi.com. Also, if you've enjoyed today's episode, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. And please join us for future episodes. It's my promise to you that we will continue to interview successful contractors and other influential individuals in the residential contracting world. This is The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International. Support for this podcast comes from Staples. Stock in your office shouldn't be difficult. Multiple vendors with separate invoices can create more work than you realize. Staples aims to be your one source for everything your business needs. As an SGI member, you'll receive access to staplesadvantage.com. 3,000 aggressively priced items, up to 30% off list price on the products you use most. Dedicated account management and award-winning customer service, free next business day delivery on orders over $50, plus a generous rebate. Use staplesadvantage.com and order today. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Success Group International family. SGI is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. SGI provides its members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Success Group International, visit www.yoursgi.com.